Hello, you. Welcome to Hello Chaos. This is the show where we get into the real stories of entrepreneurship. Um, we're for makers, founders, and all the people in the entrepreneurial ecosystem, where we really talk about the ups and downs and all the in-betweens of the entrepreneurial journey. I'm Jennifer Oladipo. And I'm Jennifer Sutton. And we're co-hosts of Hello Chaos. Uh, and it's kind of exciting. This is our, our first podcast, the first edition. And uh, I hope that uh, over time, you'll see that we're going to be celebrating, really celebrating the messiness and the chaotic worlds, uh, the worlds of entrepreneurship and innovators. And But uh, I'm excited about today because I'm not hosting. Actually, that's right. Today, <laughs> we are turning the mic on you. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Because Hello Chaos comes from an entrepreneur. So this right. isn't just like some kind of thing where it's, you know, people from, from the sidelines talking, you know, trying to offer some kind of a product. This is coming out of your story. So right. really want to get into that story today so people understand where we're coming from and kind of what to expect. Right. So I'm just going to take a step back. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my entrepreneur journey. Um, so I right now and have been the, the founder uh, and CEO of Brightco Marketing. It is a full service marketing and advertising agency located in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, I have spent my entire career uh, 25 plus, keep that plus, <laughs> decided I'm not going to go over 25. Just a little bit of it's math. Just the Entrepreneurs don't need math. Of marketing um, on the agency side of the, the marketing um, uh, industry. And I grew up in the media and analytics and research design. So, but when you say media, you don't mm -hmm. mean um, like this kind of situation no. where you're producing media. I, what do you mean? I was the one that bought airtime and space that uh, nobody knows about. That it's a, <laughs> a, you know, a world that I would come home and go, I work for this great ad, ad agent. I'm working on this national brand and we're launching this TV spot. And they'd go, oh, so you produce the spot? No, no, no. I did all the analytics to figure out <laughs> where that air, that spot should run. So, and I negotiated that. Well, what did you negotiate? The time. <laughs> so excited. Or I would bring home magazines. I'm a huge magazine fan. I would, you know, I love, I love all things media um, and, a con and a consumer of media, whether it was radio, but magazine. I would, I bought that. I bought, what did you buy? What did you do? What were I like? <laughs> I negotiated that placement. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, but, you know, reading all those, the analytics to find out where those target audiences were consuming um, and how to, how to connect the creative message and the brand and the positioning with the right audiences and the right channels and the right placements. So that's, that was my life. That's been my life the majority of, of my career. And then what, what drove you to make the leap to do your own thing? Do my own thing? Well, I got really kind of frustrated. I was working for an, an ad agency and I had hit the glass ceiling mm -hmm. um, as, a, as a woman and there just was not a, uh, a career path for me. And also at the time, I, you know, we had just come out of the, the horrible recession of 2008, mm. going into 2010, where, where, you know, ad agencies took a huge hit back then. I don't know if people realize, about 40% of agencies between 2008 and 2010 closed their doors mm -hmm. across the country. Um, and if they did survive, the other six probably cut their staff anywhere from 20 to 50%. So then you didn't really have anywhere else to go necessarily, or so, not as many options. So, well, not necessarily. It, it was the landscape that changed when, when the economy started to recover and people started wanting to budget back for marketing. Um, the clients would come in the door and go, okay, I'm a CMO. I used to just have a budget that I was responsible for for advertising, trade shows, um, and like sales collateral. Now I'm now responsible for all the advertising, the sales force, the CRM, website, now sales training, but I have less budget. Gotcha. So I'm looking to you, advertising agency, marketing firm, to partner with me to tell me with my limited dollars where do I spend my time, energy, and resources for the company? So 
it became more challenging for an ad agency or a marketing firm that was more in a traditional setting Mm -hmm. um, to deliver some of those, I would call integrated solutions where you're really optimizing and maximizing every asset, every dollar um, to to generate a better, what we call ROMI, you know, the ROI. Um, And a lot of marketing firms and ad agencies really weren't set up for that. I was also had my fourth child because I am a, was a working mom. I have four kids now ages 10 to 21. Um, but at the time I had just had my fourth child mm. and I was working 90 hours a week, traveling 15 days a month out of the office, out of Greenville and realized I needed to make a change mm-hmm. anyway. So I ended up leaving and taking some, to be, being just a solopreneur. And uh, when, when I kind of let people know I'm on my own, picking up, helping people do media plans or research or brand strategy, whatever they needed, I was connecting with all these, um, I, I'll call these you know, senior level folks that had all left their agencies back a couple of years prior. Mm. So this was all happening, 2013 is when I left. Okay. Um, and yeah, it was like, all of a sudden I'm connecting with all these old creative directors I used to work with or research um, strategists or um, copywriters who were all now on their own and had the, you know, were working in little silos with their clients. Yeah. And the client was like, wow, you guys are, and so we started formulating these like virtual teams. Yeah, like a collective. A collective. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so this is the fall of, you know, picking up projects, doing stuff. And I said, why can we not do this as a, like a real company? Um, So I interviewed close to 200 VPs of marketing, CMOs across the country. How long did that take? A couple months, just having conversations and like, what are you missing from your agency partnership? What would you like to see from an agency partnership? And what they described was the model that we had built. Eventually, we event built and launched at the end of 2013. That is now Bright Co Marketing, okay. um, which was designed really as a, uh, a non-traditional agency that designs teams around the client needs, but with all the operations, the infrastructure, the tools and services. And the really the thinking that they would get from a large traditional agency, but we could do it for a lot less mm-hmm. because we didn't have the overhead and we could be a lot more nimble and flexible, but deliver the similar quality ideas um, that you would get from a larger traditional agency. And you see that out there now, oh, yeah. but at the time. That, nobody was there. Um, we were, so our model was built in a virtual infrastructure from the beginning and um, and I, you know, I still feel like we have a uniqueness, even though uh, there's some similar models. Um, we've, we, it's the, it's the operations, the infrastructure that we've built to kind of connect everybody and keep the brands that we work on secure, and safe, and consistent across every touch point. So let me back you up a yeah. little bit because you had, you saw, you had to make a change. Yep. You saw an opportunity. So what did you have to do to actually make that into a company? And mm-hmm. like, did you know, at coming out of a career that was em- employed for your entire career right, up to that yeah, point, yeah. so did you know what the next steps were? I mean, no. did you know how to make it happen? No, I, ha- I had no idea, <laughs> literally no idea. And, and honestly, n- not until I got faced with that, there wasn't even a dream. Like, I wasn't like, I wanna own my own business, mm-hmm. which, you know, that I know was unusual when I talked to other entrepreneurs. Uh, they there was some vision of I want to own my own business. I, you know, I was happy working for somebody else's brand and growing that brand, um, but needed to do this out of necessity. And then when it was okay, I want to start this. I literally had no idea where to go. I mean, it was do I talk to the SBA? Do I what is the SBDC? And people would go go to this place, go to this, but the, I didn't know what questions to ask other than, um, this is my idea. <laughs> yeah. What, how, how do I build it? What yeah. do I need to know? Um, but I, you know, coming from the connections I had in the corporate background, I actually had more, um, insights and advice that I got from 
other entrepreneurs in the market. So I would sit down with other small business owners that I was working with on the marketing side and go and ask them, what what should I do? And I, you know, got some fantastic, like fantastic advice of, you need to, you know, you need to budget this much for legal. Mm -hmm. This is how you need to establish your company. Like the legal side. I knew it from brand. Right. I, I got brand marketing and brand strategy and how to develop the logos, the positioning, all the, the things that are still very important in a business plan. But then how do I activate it is what I didn't know of, you know, what lawyer specializes in, you know, IP and trademarking and establishing a business? What CPA should I reach out to that would give me the advice to go, this is, you, you either need to be a C Corp or an S Corp or an LLC and having those conversations. And we, you know, we, we had multiple and, and the scary thing, we were getting advice and, and not the same advice from. Yeah, I was just about to ask you, like, <laughs> how did you, how did you differentiate good advice from bad? I mean, how did you know, you know, which were the quality resources? Did you just have to talk to a bunch of people we, and, and weed it out? We did. We, we talked to several CPAs um, uh, and account and different accounting firms. Uh, and and look, I, I, I'm fortunate. I mean, I, my husband, who came from wealth management, I mean, he now works for Brightco, but at the time he was with a, you know, wealth management brokerage company. And, but he knows the language. Mm. So um, if I didn't have him sitting in some of those, those side chairs with me, uh, I can't even imagine what other, and I, I can't imagine because I've talked to other entrepreneurs and founders of sitting in those chairs by myself mm. because it's very intimidating when you don't even operate on the same language plane as, as a banker or an accountant of, you know. Did you did you feel like they were able to meet you where you were? I mean, like, do, did you feel mm. like you could say, I really can, like don't understand that acronym, or can you break that down for me, or what, what is this? Because no. we talked about how some yeah. people, they don't know the difference between, like, what's income, what's revenue, what's gross, what's net. Right. Did you feel like you could ask those questions? Uh, not with everybody. Mm. Not, and not, and, and honestly, it wasn't, until we had kind of established the business, as in we got our EIN and, and registered in South Carolina and did all that. It wasn't really until I started getting involved with the chamber organization and started talking with not just chamber members uh, or chamber staff, but other members who were like, okay, because I, I was starting to connect go, you and I are kind of in the same boat what did you hear? This is what I heard. Help me now. Like, so it really became more of a peer to peer, but sitting in, a, you know, across from somebody's desk at a, at a, in a financial office, um, unless I knew somebody. So like we would reach out to, Oh, our neighbor is a banker mm -hmm. at this. And, and again, my, my husband was there asking some of the questions. I'm like, I wouldn't even known to ask that question. But then I could kind of go, look, I'm just going to ask, you need to talk to me like you're four, like I'm four. Yeah. <laughs> um, because this is new to me. I need to make sure I understand. Um, I'm going to ask some really dumb questions and don't judge me. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't that comfortable in, I, I didn't, I didn't, don't think that every organization out there um, creates an environment for those discussions to have um, if I didn't have a male counterpart sitting next to me. Mm. And so even though these are places that you're going because they're supposed to serve business owners or right. help you launch your business or whatever, you're feeling like they didn't always create that environment right. for you to come and actually yep. get what you needed. So sometimes if I would go by myself, it would be a different level conversation and environment if I had my husband with me there would be a different level of conversation mm -hmm. and support. Um, and that's something, you know, when you start talking and, and among other women-owned businesses and, and minority-owned businesses, that's a trend, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. Not just in, and look, this is not a our market problem. This is a national um, issue. So yeah. uh, I think um, the rise of more minority and women-owned 
business kind of organizations that are fueling those conversations or helping, helping us feel more confident. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the same time, allowing, you know, I guess educating the, the organizations that are there to support how to develop their messaging and creating comfort zones. And so as the, in your, you know, your first decade, it wasn't just like, you relied on a bunch of people at the beginning to get you launched. You continued to go on oh, yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. You who, have who else? To. Yeah. So you know, we, um, be, you know, became more involved with the the chamber organizations, um, organizations like Community Works. Um, in in 2018, um, actually 2017, I, I applied for um, a uh, chamber's minority business accelerator. Um, program. I was a part of that 2018 cohort, which was that to me was like the the a big aha moment for me. But it and was I'm sorry, we're yeah, talking no. about the chamber in Greenville, South Carolina. Yes, yeah. Um, and you know, th- so they have created this this fantastic programming for minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses. And you walk into this, you have 20 some people in your cohort, and everyone starts talking about their journey and their situation. And I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, I'm finally in a room Mm -hmm. of people that, that I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more advanced when some of them, some of them are more advanced than me. Um, but we all had similar experiences and conversation and, and it allowed us to be, um, you know, Dr. Nika White is the moderator and, and the facilitator and she really creates this environment of vulnerability. Mm. Um, that you you just break all that down and everyone's like I'm not alone mm-hmm. okay so I'm not I shouldn't feel stupid uh, yeah. for asking those questions five years ago how did that shift things for you to be able to have now a community of people it's not just you mm-hmm. and your husband out there it's it's re- it's refreshing um, it is uh, you you build you build that just because you we graduated in that that cohort in 2018 I still stay in contact with a lot of people in that cohort. I also connect, um, I'm now a coach. I've, I've um, coached in that program. So now I've gone from a member cohort class <laughs> person to now I'm the, on the other side and a coach um, for the last three years. So I try to stay connected and build on the community. Um, and then 2020, I had been apply and, and I'd been applying for other programs um, just to continue my professional development, my acceleration for the company, for Brightco. Um, and I uh, was, was selected to be a part of Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program that has a partnership with Babson College. Mm-hmm. That was intense. I mean, if I thought, if you know, the Chambers MBA program, that was, you know, like a nice faucet. The... <laughs> Goldman Sachs program is like a fire hydrant mm-hmm. of, of information, but our cohort's 150 people across the country of different founders. Um, your small group is around 40. I mean, it's, um, and the connections I made and the conversation, it's again, it's, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you're experiencing these things, you know, and so it was, it's like, that's the trend. Um, but now I've got, you know, a weekly conversation with some of these folks that if I have a question on anything, I pop it into my uh, uh, text, group text, and, oh, yeah. and I'll get 20 people to respond. That's awesome. Uh, you know, and, and I'm not the only one. We all use it. So it's this fuel yeah, um, yeah. and this support group that, we, that we've created. So, you know, so being a part of that, the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial um, ecosystem from different facets Mm -hmm. has been a fuel for for me it's been a fuel for our agency and our and our team members um and and that's what led us to our next endeavor so you already had a business so like the next one is super easy right no you learned everything already the first time right i did not (laughs) did not uh because you forget one you forget and two it's like so let me back up and i'll say we you know we were had been very fortunate that we were um, selected to help our city, Greenville, South Carolina, position, create a create a brand position, a strategy to 
um, recruit and help also foster the, the entrepreneur ecosystem, but to recruit other entrepreneurs to Greenville, mm -hmm. to position Greenville as an entrepreneurial um, friendly city. Um, and, and, you know, through that journey and through that brand work that we did, you know, we interviewed and did a lot of research across the country of what's in the founder's mindset. You know, I had my experience, but, is, but am I isolated, in, you know, in this, in a, in a vacuum or an echo chamber of my own? Mm -hmm. what's, what's that bigger, you know, entrepreneurial or founder mindset across the country? Um, what's the ecosystem look like in Greenville? And uh, it, was, it was fascinating that, okay, there were a lot of similarities of the journey that I'd taken, but um, a lot, some other nuances that came up. And we were, you know, uh, uh, motivated and, I mean, completely inspired by the city manager and the economic development team within the city uh, and, and launched this, this fantastic campaign. But keeping with that journey, our team was like, God, this, you know, this is great for the city that we're positioning, but we still feel like the, the, the entrepreneur community needs to be fueled. There's still a gap mm -hmm. the, um, that we see that, it, you know, these ecosystems need to be fed. And, you know, being a part of the, of the ecosystem in Greenville, great advisors that, you know, as I was on a soapbox rant of, boy, I wish I could have this mm -hmm. if I were an entrepreneur, if I, you know, um, it's very it's still very hard to to navigate i'm i was just sitting in the chair listening to other entrepreneurs so what's the difference between sbdc and sba mm -hmm. how do i Which go and talk small business association, association and the small business development center yeah <laughs> what's the difference between that and scra what do they south carolina research, research authority, authority. <laughs> what's the difference of what can the what does the chamber and not just greenville chamber there are multiple chambers in mm -hmm. this footprint so and each one offers things um beyond just their 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 small city mm -hmm. right so how do i how do i gather information to go what resource is right for me that was what we saw as like a huge gap that was um, um that was missing mm -hmm. uh and and somebody in our on, in our you know advisor council said Jennifer, you're talking about, and it's not a Greenville problem. You have just identified a gap that is in every market, every city is struggling with that as they're starting to try to build these entrepreneur and innovation communities, these local communities. Um, that is the biggest gap of it's hard to navigate. So how do you how do you highlight and amplify the entrepreneurial voices so people can understand they're not alone but then how do you help them navigate those resources available to them how do you connect those mm -hmm. together and, and in a broad spectrum because in a lot of markets it's there's there's pockets of we dedicate ourselves to high impact entrepreneurs or just innovation or just bioscience and just tech mm -hmm. or just advanced manufacturing so there wasn't any kind of global um solution or or source that people could go to to go i i feel comfortable or it felt like it was jaded of well that's not that's a that's a biased um oh right like they, know, they're like they, the they've, they've got this resource but there's just so much behind it that it's it's maybe not for me right you know or it's not you know it's being you know driven by an organization that's in a silo that's not connected to everybody else mm -hmm. um so you know, then another person kind of leaned toward me and he said, Trevor, you're an entrepreneur. What's stopping you from creating this? And so that was the week before Thanksgiving of 2021. And we are now, um, we are now March, this is March 31st, Mar 2022. Right. So I went back to the team so and I said, wasted a lot of time. I know. <laughs> so I went back to our, our Brightco team and I said, let's unlock this and let's unpack this. And let's see if there's a there there. Mm -hmm. um, and we spent a couple of days, weeks brainstorming. It was fun and, 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 and it was invigorating. And, um, and then at the end, over Christmas break, I think I reached out to you 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, right before the holidays. Right before the holidays and yeah. I said, I have this idea. I've done I've done research around it. Um, here's where my thought is. What do you think? Yeah, and what did you say? My jaw was dropping because I was like, Jennifer, I have been trying to figure out how to do this exact thing. Like, and I've given up and I was just like, I'm, and I, I had decided like in January, I'm just going to, I was just going to start with a little newsletter because right. I don't, I don't have the, you know, all the infrastructure and everything that you have. And I was like, you know, I've just been working on, on my own, um, had, you know, been in media and it's pretty much marketing little, you know, solopreneur, babypreneur kind right. of thing. And was like, I'm just going to start something that's, that's, that's for, um, for entrepreneurs because especially startups in particular, mm-hmm. I was, I was thinking about because after all those years of working on the, you know, from being a business reporter, then working like on the insides of those companies, just realizing like, man, there's just like still so much that people don't know. That's like so basic and so important. Right. So, and me, I just feel like, you know, media is a, it's a thing that people galvanize around, right. you know, it's a, it's a place to have conversations. It's, lasted forever the, the the format may change we should talk about that yeah the format may change but there's a, when, when there's a thing that everybody goes to and gets the content and they talk about it and they find what they need and it's a two-way conversation so they tell you more of what they need and you give more back that's right so when you started talking about you know in, the innovation vision. and entrepreneurship <laughs> i was like oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> yeah. and and how do we feel that in these yeah. and, and really and become kind of that hyper local source for entrepreneurs and yeah. innovators, um, founders in those markets. And, and, you know, after talking to you, I was like, I think I have, I think there's a there there. Yeah. Uh, but it's like, okay, I, I, again, I, I knew I, I've worked in agencies m- my whole, my whole career. It was easy to start the agency because I knew the operations. Mm. I knew the infrastructure. I knew how to set up um, books. I knew to how to set up our, you know, our systems. It was just a, it was a f- exciting and fascinating, but at the same time, super scary. Cause I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I've talked, I talked to several connections I had of different publishers um, in Indiana and Chicago. And, you know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm a Midwestern girl, even though I'm live in Greenville now, but I'm, that's where my roots are. And, uh, and that's where I bought most of the media. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, talking to them, I'm like, this is what I'm, this is what I'm thinking. I don't want to compete with the general business media or the general news media. I really want to create this niche. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you got something there, but you need to, you got, you got to get deal with your trademarks and get your IP and get your business structure. And, and I was like, uh, okay, this is, uh, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Part of the, part of what's been cool about you moving so fast is hearing you come back after you've had this conversation. And then there's like this, Oh, aha. Uh, yeah, aha <laughs> moment. <laughs> there were lots before of ahas. We, lots of ahas yeah. before we get to the oh shit, which yeah. is I think I would say we're safely in the shit right now. No, I think our oh shit moment was about thirty days ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's just mine. Yeah. As a, on the editorial side, yeah. it's like this I think thing we'll go through happen. another oh shit like in thirty days from now. Yeah, it's like Dylan, who's you know he's one of our one of our team members. He's sitting on the other side, but he's going to go. We're in the oh shit moment. Jennifer. <laughs> we are clearly in the oh shit because we've got we've got a launch plan. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, but but just seeing that process of having those conversations and then you understand this piece and there's like a little more light here and a little more light there. Yeah. And the thing starts to become yeah. clearer and it starts to gel. And then one of the most exciting things is what's going on around the format, because it's 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 not like anything I've no, worked we, on we, or with we, before. we looked at it so you know so as we we talked through that journey of of um what's you know first we have to start with the brand of like oh my god i'm gonna have to come up with trademark and all that the all the ip stuff and then i got a you know business planning so sitting down with really good trademark and ip attorneys i cannot like um, stress how important that is. Is that the lesson of the day? That is, that's the lesson. <laughs> um, because I was ready to go out and actually I had, I'd already been telling people. That's right. Some you of said, these, I these are, this out of I, my and, and, uh, um, and I kind of made like a mini little deck and I was like, this is what we're doing. I need to get your advice. I need to, you know, get, get, and the attorney was like, y- pull back. Like, <laughs> it's like settle. How long, you know, when is that? I'm like, I said, I, but I, I need to, I want to launch it like now. And he goes, we need, there's some things that we got to do first. Yeah. We got to get you, we, we've got to get you secure. Um, 
And Didn't you like have a and few, protected a few like like slides in the deck that you like had to stop showing? Oh yeah. He, well, he <laughs> was like, stop showing the deck. Oh. Like period. Because <laughs> you know, and that was where you know we came up with the name of you know Brightco Marketing is an is our colors are orange and and gray, and n- no relation to to where we are in yes, the, Clemson, the south. There are Clemson, Clemson fans, fans in this area. But uh, we chose orange. Tennessee people. It's it's not UT <laughs> either. Sorry. <laughs> But you know we're we, we're a marketing agency, so the study of color, um, orange, uh, I- emotes, um, forward thinking, solutions, and you know, so that's why we we chose orange for Brightco. But we wanted to have a nod if we created the sister company to Brightco. Um, we so the name was Orange Whip. Orange Whip. Um, and that's the parent company of this new endeavor. And little nod to Brightco with the orange, and then whip is not the drink. <laughs> not the weapon. It's not the weapon. It's for work in progress. It's WIP, so orange whip. Um, because we felt like that's what the entire entrepreneur journey is. It's always a work in progress. If you're a founder, you're always a work in progress, okay. too. <laughs> and so uh, orange whip has the digital property. Correct. We've got the digital zine that's monthly. We got the di- we've got... Hello Chaos, this podcast. Hello Chaos. Hello Chaos. And um, in the zine, that's where you that's where you were able to marry that that storytelling mm-hmm. and the resource, and so people are going to be able to get in there, yeah, and engage with it on one level with 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 just you know getting highlights from entrepreneurs and people in that entrepreneurial right. ecosystem, but then also like right in that experience, get to work and right. find the resources be- and figure out what's for them That's right, right in there. We want to be in, you know, informative so that they act. Yeah. You know, it's like and Jennifer, Jennifer and I were talking like what what should this format be and we thought e-newsletters are on the rise. There's a big trend in that, um, the skims and we mocked that up. We had that kind of, you know, go and then leading people to a website that had our sponsors and stuff makes on there makes, which is that's the the trend. We started testing that within the entrepreneur community, not just, you know, in, in our market, but across the country, I started, we started having these conversations. And it was interesting, the feedback that we got was, I love it. I love that format if I just wanna understand what's the skim in my market, like what's the daily happening. Mm-hmm. But uh, that gives me anxiety as an entrepreneur mm. or as in a founder, I need something that's a little bit more digestible, a little bit more um, easy to navigate as in like not 40 links in right or to go to a website that you are just bombarded with like an ad crowded Mm -hmm. space. Um, so then we started looking at different formats and looking at, you know, flip books. Do we, you know, what, what is our product? Which was, that was kind of my oh shit moment of, (laughs) I, I have come from like creating brand campaigns and strategies and media programs, but not products mm. so that's when it was like okay you and i you know yeah, we got to develop the, the like you know how to develop an editorial product i can package it but like let's figure out what we, the product yeah, is what is the package what is it um yeah. and i uh, you know and and that's where i felt like was our biggest both aha kind of an oh shit when yeah. we came back when our first um prototypes were not testing well yeah that was like oh <laughs> we're developing something that they don't even they don't want to consume yeah yeah and how do we make this scalable so we went back and really challenged the team to go how do we create something and what we ended up creating is we can't find anything yeah, of its kind we're kind of frankensteining we're like okay a well, little bit of this that? a little bit can of that can we do this and our developers were like our digital developer were uh no, unless you answer these 20 questions. If I'm a user, mm-hmm. if I'm a viewer, if you can solve these 20 problems within the user experience and, and tell me how you would solve those problems in the wireframe and the sitemap and the infrastructure, I'll, we'll build it. But and we did. And so <laughs> we sat down <laughs> and in a week, you know, we had we had solved all those problems and the product that we're developing is so I mean, it's just so thrilling um, to see, yeah, we're talking about innovation and entrepreneurship, but we're developing something that's innovative yeah. that's never been done before yeah. within the media space. So, uh, you know, um, now it's just countdown to launch. <laughs> yeah, and we're, and we're, we're going fast. So we're even we're, like, we're like launch slash beta. 
<laughs> yeah. So, like, Watch us. <laughs> so we're going to be asking, and because because that's the whole attitude of the and tone of our editorial of we're fueling the ecosystem. So we need to hear exactly the stories. Exactly. Who do we need to amplify? Who do you want to hear from? What do you need to know? What are your challenges? Um, Because, like I said, we've talked to uh, close to 100 different entrepreneurs through just this journey, Mm -hmm. just the Orange Whip journey. Um, And we're we're trying to respond and and cater. And as we've been listening and designing things that are with that entrepreneur in mind. But once we launch it, you know, we want to we're going to be hitting 10,000, you know, 50,000 subscribers, 100,000 subscribers, hopefully in a very short time frame. Yeah. So we want to have that feedback loop to always be fueling them. Yeah. Because this is truly the first independent, what well, we said, independent, unvarnished, yeah. unfiltered mm-hmm. online resource that is written with the founder and the entrepreneur in mind. At, at the center. Yeah. There, there and it's and it's not it's not your entrepreneur news because I do that you know I've done that yep. it's not it's not the the business reporting stuff so you know I I'm I'm really excited to be able to again like fill this this empty space that's just been empty in a lot of places right. where you've got your news media and you've got your your organizations that work with entrepreneurs and you know there's a little there's back and forth between those but there's there's not this particular space where it's really nuts and bolts for an entrepreneur at the hyper local level. Right. So obviously there's entrepreneur, you know, um, and ink and things like that, but not focused on right. the communities where the people are making things happen. Right. You know, and, and connecting them yeah. with yeah. those resources. So it's, it's exciting. Yeah. And, you know, we're launching in the, the markets of South Carolina first with the goal of, uh, six new markets in 2023 um, six other new markets in 2024 to be in 15 markets within three years, 30 markets within five years. I hope we exceed those goals, um, but that's at least the yeah. the plan that we have in place to, to do that. And, um, I, you know, it's just uh, I, I feel like we are serving a need um, that we've that we've just continuously heard across the country. Yeah. And we'll find out exactly how and exactly right. how it needs yeah. to keep growing and that's and right. changing and 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 th- the other thing that makes me really excited about it, and it's and it's um, and this is where Jen, Jen O and I really connected in terms of the editorial content um, about the storytelling. It's really it's the wide spectrum of viewpoints. Yeah. It's it's uh, telling innovation stories regardless of the category in the industry. It's thinking about high impact entrepreneurs not just in the tech space. Um, or in certain categories, it's high impact and however, and that person defines impact. And I am so excited about that. We've like locked, locked everybody down for the first ones. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like as of like two days ago, yeah. uh, there was a, um, it kept going into somebody's, um, spam box or something. Yeah. And that's why I was like, where did he go? <laughs> but, but, um, there's just, there's a really good range of, I mean, the services, the products, the mm-hmm. genders, the motivation, the stories. Now we're really drilling in on the actionable parts of their story. So right. I'm really hoping people go on and, and get more into people's entrepreneurial journeys. Right. But we're d- digging into the piece that's a really good takeaway. It's, but like it's the, ha- the how to's, right? Exactly. It's yep. the how to's. How to, you know, how to, like, how do you innovate? How do you collaborate with people? How do you develop a product? How do you network in your ecosystem? It's all that kind of stuff. Right. And so, um, I'm I'm really excited just to see what we've got laid out so far because it's it's yeah it's a breath and, that's really good. And then the other part that makes me excited is the the way that we are um, serving up the resources. So we've got this really cool resource matrix that we're building. But here's the difference. There's a lot of there's a lot of aggregators and matrices of these resources that are out there um, that we've observed in almost every market. But I think what we're doing, and th- you know, this is a, a kudo to Jen O, is she's like, we got to help. Well, thank you. <laughs> We've got to help navigate. So yeah, they, they, they're going to get the the one, two, three, four, five fact sheet on um, this organization or this incubator or this accelerator, but we're going to take a deep dive every edition and kind of tell that deeper story of of this is really what who this is for. Mm-hmm. This is the successes that have come out of this resource. Um, 
So it, it informs that entrepreneur and just a, a, a lot mm-hmm. uh, a lot easier. Yeah. So like, what, uh, what is it really like to get in there? How do you know if it's for you? And so there are fewer people who are in the situation you were, where you're just kind of going in blind and feeling small yeah. in the room. And I, and I know I'm not alone yeah. in that. Yeah. Um, so how do we, how do we kind of uh, break down those barriers and yeah. make people feel comfortable to go, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go and apply to that. And I'm really appreciating, you know, the generosity of people and, and how they are being honest, because it's hard, you know, when yeah. you it's um, when you go in there and you're saying, I'm going to write down, <laughs> I'm going to share this with the world. Yeah. Um, people can tense up, but but people are being generous and genuine. And, yeah. and that's all that we really need, that's, really, that's to, need. to keep everybody going in the And then, the you know, we're, we're going to have an, uh, the events a calendar. I mean, it's so we're, we're trying to make sure we have all the content. Again, we want to be that that trusted, um, independent, unvarnished online resource in that local market. So yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna tell you what events, what grant deadlines are coming up, what are, you know, what are things that we feel like you need to know, um, regardless of where you are in your journey. Yeah. One last thing. Yeah. I think that's important for people to know. Yeah. Um, it is accessible. Oh, as in. As in. There is no paywall. Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> so it, it is a subscribe. Yeah. You need to subscribe. We just need your name and your... We just want to know who you are. We just want to know who you are. That's name it. and email. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's your subscribe. Yeah. It is. Um, and, our, and our revenue model, because I think it's important to understand, it is okay. a partner-endorsed revenue model, and it's limited. So we have, for each market, we are limited to 10 partners. Yeah. Um, because... The way that we're even going to tell the partner stories. So a lot of our partners are economic developers. They are the accelerators, the incubators. They're the universities yeah. um, that come in. They have a lot to tell, but sometimes they don't tell it that in a way that's relatable mm-hmm. and consumable. Um, so they're they're going to be a part of this digital digest in a in a kind of an interesting and innovative way on their own. Yeah. Um, new for them very, and it's very, new for yeah, them new opportunities for them because it's not it's not the news media it's not advertising that's right it's, so it's so new way even just them. in that revenue model yeah. we're, we're trying to keep it uh, um, easy to read and, and consume again with that founder yeah. with that entrepreneur in mind yeah. you can only get it on the subscription and the in the the digital the easy that's right it's only accessible that correct. one way correct but it's an easy way it's, it's an easy, easy. way your name, <laughs> your name and email. Yeah. Submit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe. Join us. Join, Join us. us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this is this has been great. Um, I'm glad to to yeah. hear your story and get a little bit into that and and um, to be a part of it now. I know. You know that's super exciting. And you're so we're we're building the team. Yeah. You know, it's like as we go and we start scaling, it is kind of scary because like, you know, again, I knew how to man, you know, operations and systems for an agency. Well, that's a whole different yeah, ball game. Different so, skill sets, all so kinds uh, of stuff. different different types of people that we're hiring, and then uh, different structures that we're building, uh, and uh, it's been <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love how I'm like Jennifer. I need this, and you're like, okay, okay. hang tight, hang tight. <laughs> we'll get it in we're, three days. We'll <laughs> <laughs> give me this afternoon. Uh, we're working on it. Oh, or because it's like. Oh, we need that. Yeah, I'm like, I'm going to need a way to do this. Yeah. We're, uh, and then I, and then D- Dylan and some of our other team members are, I need this. Oh, my God, we got we to gotta add that in there of our workflow. So yeah. it's been, uh, um, we are kind of in that boot. I mean, it is literally, this company has been in a, in a bootstrap, even though it's attached. Mm-hmm. And we're borrowing the resources from Brightco. <laughs> uh, uh, Brightco is putting their resources on loan, I I'm guess. Very and, grateful um, to everybody Very grateful the for team. the, and, and the team has been really, you know, has been super motivated and, and excited about this because they also are a part of the community and and they they heard they heard these feedback and these stories and Mm -hmm. so that they recognize that this is a it's an exciting time an exciting endeavor so i'm excited to launch we're ready to go so we're ready we're starting with hello podcast hello podcast we're starting, with, Hello. we're starting with Hello Chaos, <laughs> and um, which is available on all the podcast platforms, and of course through the e-zines wherever uh, we are distributing. Uh, wherever you, yeah, mm-hmm. so whenever we unroll in your market, that's another way to get it. That's right. 
And yeah, so you can, you know, subscribe to it. We'd love to, for you to listen. Give us a nice review because that helps our algorithms. <laughs> Email um, hello at <laughs> hello chaos if it's not so nice and you want to talk to us about something. Yeah. No, be honest, be honest. We're yeah. unvarnished. But we do want to hear from people directly. I mean, that's, that's right. what makes it work. That's what makes it fun. That's right. Yeah. Like what's, you know, send us notes of, hey, would you get this person on? I'd yeah, love to hear their story. Yeah. Or can you guys talk about this challenge? Because sometimes it might be a, you know, a small business you know, challenge or, you know, I'm at 50 people. How do I get to 500? So, or can you find people that can tell those stories? Right. So that's what we want to hear. So yeah, subscribe, um, and, and join us, listen to us, give us reviews and yeah, just come on board and unmute yourself because that's what we say. Come on, okay, unmute come yourself because <laughs> we're going to cut through the bullshit because that's bullshit. cut through the bullshit, through the bullshit.